Good day folks and welcome to the IT way. My name is Joan and today we're going to talk about how to configure the content filtering sections in the Security Appliance MX. So we have a previous video before with the firewall rules section where we were able to see the layer server firewall rules, how you can select different categories like video, music, well file sharing, and you can block all that traffic. In this video, we're going to go to the security and SD1 and content filtering and we're going to see how that works and how you're going to configure it. Over there, we're going to have different options. We're going to have the categories to select video music, to select a specific traffic coming from the voice, with the media, with the web file sharing. And after that, we can have different boxes where you can select specific URLs that you want to block or even whitelist. I'm going to show you the option of how to block everything and just allow the specific URLs they're going to allow as well. One of the requirements that you need to know to get that content filtering section in place or for you to see it is that the security MX that you might have should have the advanced security license. So you have two different licenses for MXs. The first one could be the enterprise, which is the base line license for you to be able to use the MX and the other one comes with advanced security license. With this one you will be able to have more security um, features. With the advanced license some of the features that you can have is the content filtering section and the IPS IDS with Cisco AMP. And let's go to the dashboard and configure it. Here we're going to see how to configure the content filtering section in the Cisco Meraki dashboard. First, we have to go to security and SD1, content filtering. Here you will see the whole section how to configure. The first part is a category filtering. If you want to filter one specific application or category, this is the place for you to go. You can click and you see the drop down all the different options for you to select. Today, we're going to select three different options. The first one is going to be shopping. So all the websites that goes through that category of shopping will be blocked. The other one that we're going to use is games. And the third one we can use malware sites. What the Cisco Meraki MX does, it has a database for all these categories and it's going to have a conglomerate of all different URLs that matches the category of this one that you selected. So if you try to browse the internet once like shopping could be amazon.com that can come with that category, it's going to be blocked based on all the URLs that the MX is checking against all the traffic from the clients. Here you can launch the URL category lookup. Let's see if Amazon is really part of that category. Yes, so you can see that Amazon is part of the shopping. It means that if you try to browse from any client from this network, it's gonna be blocked for that category. Here you have two different options in this drop down: full list and top sites. To not overload the RAM or the memory of the CPU of this MX, we have two different categories. One is for top sites. It means that the MX is going to have a default list of URLs for each category, but it's not going to have all of them. In that sense, if your URL that you're trying to browse is one of the most common, it's going to be part of the top sites. If it's not, it's part of the full list. So if you have the top sites and you browse the internet with one URL that is not one of the most common, it means that the MX is going to let it go through and it's going to allow it if you have the top sites. But if you have the full, full list and that URL is not very common, the MX is going to talk to the web database that it has and then it's going to bring up with that query to see if the URL that you sent is part of the shopping list or not. Of course, if you select this option, it means that the CPU of the RAM is going to be compromised and the throughput or the performance of this MX is going to be reduced if you select that one. Normally, top sites only, it's more than enough for any other traffic that a client can send to the network. This part is a search filtering. In that sense is probably you're not, the client is trying to browse the internet through a search filter. 
And here you can use the web search filter to enable it and try to catch that traffic through going through Yahoo or Google as well, not just typing the URL in your web browser. As well as the restrictive YouTube content, you can enable it and you can select what kind of restriction do you want. You have two types of restriction. One is moderate, the other one is strict. So here we can disable and leave this one disabled. The last section is the URL blocking. Here you have two text boxes. The first one is the blocked URL patterns. Sometimes you don't want to block just the games section or just the shopping section. You just want to block Amazon.com and that's why it comes to play. This is a very good guide for you to understand how it works. But basically, if you want to block anything relating to Amazon.com, where you can add is the domain Amazon.com and that's it. Sometimes you can remove or block different websites that have different subdomains, for example, google.com. But it could be like there is a photos.google.com. If you want to block that specific domain, that's the way to put it. If you want to block everything related to google.com, you can just leave it google.com and it's the same. There are some instances that you really want to block everything and just allow several pages. If you want to block everything, you can put the asterisk in this section and then it's going to block everything coming from the client. If you want to allow just one URL after that, you can say Amazon.com in the whitelist URL patterns. In the same scenario, if you want to block here all the shoppings, but you want to allow Amazon, that's how you can do it. You can put Amazon.com here and that is going to be whitelisted for all the clients. After making all these changes, you will save it. And all this is going to be applied and honored to all the clients in the network. And that's how you configure the content filtering sections in the dashboard for the Cisco Security Appliance MX. If you need any help or have any questions, just post your comment below. I'm more than happy to help you. In addition to that, I'm going to put some documentations coming from the Cisco Meraki documentation portal for you well as well. And that way you can read through and you have any other questions. So that's how you configure the content filtering in the Meraki way. See you at the next one.